Whether or not Democrats are able to take back the Senate is probably going to come down to some really close runoff races in Georgia. However, they will retain control of the House, but unfortunately, they did lose some ground. They lost a couple of seats. Now, even though Joe Biden was at the top of the Democratic Party's ticket, centrists are still blaming the left. Blaming the left, suggesting that it's them, their progressivism, their bold message. That's why we lost some ground in the House, why it's so difficult for us to take back the Senate. It's like this is a parody, but no, this is actually something that Democrats like Abigail Spanberger have been arguing, lambasting the left for making them lose. So as Scott Wong and Mike Lillis of The Hill reports, moderate House Democrats lashed out at their liberal colleagues Thursday using a marathon caucus-wide conference call to bash progressives for advancing an agenda that, centrist said, cost the party a number of seats in Tuesday's elections. An impassioned Representative Abigail Spanberger, who squeaked to victory in central Virginia, took liberals to task for promoting the policy of redirecting funds away from police departments, an idea that took off following following the death of George Floyd in May, and that Republicans used that on the campaign trail to hammer Democrats with charges of nurturing crime. Spanberger called the Democrats' campaign strategy a failure. Quote, I do disagree, Abigail, that it was a failure, Speaker Nancy Pelosi interjected. We won the House. Representative Mark Vesey delivered a similar condemnation, lamenting that the far left's approach to several issues, including moving funds away from the police and banning fracking, had given ammunition to GOP attack ads. Vesey said he had watched GOP commercial after commercial using video footage of Democrats uttering the words defund the police to great effect. Liberals immediately pushed back on the moderates' narrative. Progressive caucus co-chair Pramila Jayapal jumped into the fray and argued that Democrats would not be on the cusp of ousting President Donald Trump from the White House without tremendous energy from the far left. At one point on the call, Representative Debbie McCarcel Powell, McCarcel Powell, who lost re-election, cried and lamented that no one could pronounce <laughs> no one could pro <laughs> no one could pronounce her name according to a Washington Post reporter i totally just butchered her name House Democratic leaders, rocked by the results, said on Thursday's call that they want a post-mortem review of the election strategy that led them astray. Representative Sherry Bustos, head of the party's campaign arm, who narrowly, who narrowly won re-election, said she was frustrated by bad polling and the loss of good members, but she defended the Democrats' message and tactics, noting that the House remains securely in the party's hands heading into the next Congress. So I just have to pause for a moment and get back to Representative Debbie Mukar Sol Powell. As everyone is like arguing back and forth, screaming about, no, this is your fault, and no, this is your fault, no, we should have done this, we should have done that. She just interjects, crying about how nobody can say my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The thought of her interjecting and like if I can imagine the looks on their faces like are you fucking serious? This is what you're crying about like we're having a conversation here about strategy and you're crying that nobody can pronounce your name Democrats are a mess. Listen as someone whose last name is Figueredo Deal with it. Are you not used to it by now? I'm assuming that she's older than me get used to it she lost. Maybe that's why she's crying. I don't know. Um, but look, getting to the substance of this article, individuals like Abigail Spanberger are completely wrong. They're idiotic. This is why Democrats lose. What she's saying. Because rather than remaining hyper-focused on every little thing that, Dem that Republicans might say in response to your message, why don't you just have a fucking message? Are you really saying that the Democratic Party should go against this mass movement who's calling to defund the police? I mean, they already have to an extent. Joe Biden said, no, I'm not going to defund the police. We're going to actually increase funds to police departments across the country. So you're already kind of doing that. But do you honestly think that if you create a message that is, you know, bulletproof, no Republican can, you know, lob an attack against it that is going to stick? Do you honestly think that's going to help you win? Because the only way to actually do that effectively is to just adopt the Republican Party's platform. And I've got news for you. Even if you copied and pasted your platform or their platform to yours, they're still going to attack you. They're still going to call you a socialist because that's what the Republican Party does. So standing for nothing, saying, no, we're not going to defund the police. We don't want to ban fracking. 
just so that way you can escape Republican criticism is stupid because you're never going to escape Republican criticism. They will always attack you and relentlessly so and viciously so and they're going to lie. They're going to make things up. So all that you can do is get your message out to voters and let them know you are going to fight to improve their lives. This isn't fucking rocket science. Stop crafting your message specifically to appeal to Republicans and to insulate yourself from Republican attacks. Ask yourself, for all of the Republican victories that we saw, how many of them tried to appeal to moderate Democrats? How many of them had these focus group driven talking points that would, you know, help them to insulate themselves from attacks from Democrats? I mean, the Democratic Party, in theory, their policies, as many policies as they actually talk about, they're more popular than the Republican Party's policies. So why aren't Democrats the one making Republicans afraid? Why is it that when you have the high ground when it comes to policy, you're the one who's afraid of what the opposition is going to say. I mean, Republicans have in their platform, we want to repeal Roe v. Wade and marriage equality, Obergfell v. Hodges. We want those overturned. Why aren't you attacking them? Why aren't they afraid of you? What's well, because you suck? Because your strategy is absolute dog shit. That's why. You should thank the left for whatever enthusiasm there was, had it not been for the grassroots efforts of Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, Joe Biden might not have been victorious in Minnesota, in Michigan. But they don't get that because they listen to highly paid consultants who get paid millions of dollars per year to give them the worst advice imaginable. And she probably, you know, consumes MSNBC and CNN nonstop. That just reinforces all of their bad strategic ideas. This isn't savvy. Saying that, oh, well, you, you have to tweak your message so you won't get attacked by Republicans is fucking idiotic. It is moronic. So you almost lost your election, Abigail, because you don't stand for jack fucking shit. There's a reason why individuals like AOC, Ilhan Omar are popular and they have more name recognition than you. It's because they stand for something. What don't you get? I mean, it is shocking that Republicans, I mean, they can talk about whatever harmful policy. Donald Trump can go on national television and boast about how he extrajudicially murdered a United States citizen, call protesters in the streets after George Floyd was murdered thugs, and you're worried about their criticism. I mean, a party who is worried about a very unpopular minority party's Criticism is just, they're not worth a damn. They are dog shit. They are stupid. And I know that I'm throwing in a lot of ad hominems, but they still don't get it. And they're so arrogant. They're so fucking arrogant. You all had neoliberalism at the top of the ticket. You had your centrist. You had Joe Biden running a campaign where he appealed to Republicans. So it's not that the left pushed too far. It's that they didn't push far enough. It's that Joe Biden was resistant to what their input was. So I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, Democrats are insufferable. They are just, it's infuriating because it doesn't matter what the outcome of the election is. We can have an election where literally centrists lose every single seat and progressives win every single seat. And they will still say, well, this just proves that centrism is the way to go. They can get blown out. And the conclusion will always be, you pushed us too far left. Centrism is what we need. It doesn't matter. The narrative is already predetermined. It's just more convenient for them to use this narrative to lambast the far left because their corporate donors don't want them to move left. If they embrace Medicare for all, all that money that they take from health insurance companies, that goes bye bye like that. So, of course, they're not going to jeopardize, you know, that money, those campaign contributions. So they pretend as if their strategy is sound and it's really the left who's hurting them when in actuality it's them, their lack of a policy vision that's hurting them, not the left. The left is helping you, so thank them.